So this video from Ash has popped up in my feed a couple of times, and I'm, I'm getting more curious every time I've seen it. So we're going to go ahead and check it out today. It says the raid community's mad at creators over this. And I don't have any idea about anything going on where the community's mad at creators any more so than they usually are, right? There's a handful of, of, of viewers that just love to stay mad at all the creators or particular creators or whatever it is. Um, you know, someone was mad at me the other day in one of my videos uh, for because I wasn't talking about raid in a video titled not talking about raid. So like, you know what I mean? People are just going to be mad. And there's, there's a certain level of intelligence that some people just don't have, and they're going to be mad. So is it, is that one of these instances where people are just mad because they're going to be mad or have the creators done something? On the thumbnail, it's something about creators being out of touch. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious what's going on. So I thought we would watch it together. And if I think it, if I think I have anything interesting to add to the conversation or anything, then we'll upload this one. And if not, then uh, you'll never see this at all. Okay, so let's go and get to it. Hey guys, Ash here, Raid Shadow Legends, sending some positive vibes your way. Also, I know the tone sounds a little different there, but I've skipped ahead a little bit because he started to talk and then he said, by the way, so he's, I know that that sounded a little different, but there's context, there's a reason it sounds that he means it. He does mean positive vibes your way, so... I don't want to hear anything about the tone. Uh, this really stems from the conversation around corpulent cadaver, but it actually... And as always, this video will be linked below uh, and probably carded to if I haven't done it already and on the end screen of this video. So, of course, uh, I don't know if I'll watch the whole thing in this video either. So you're probably going to want to go back and... Um, Check it out if you haven't seen the whole extends thing. Extends to anyway. much more than just that, right? Really in balancing as a whole in this game. And I want to use really a couple videos as examples and have an open conversation with you guys and see how you feel about all this stuff. Right? Yeah, he started talking about corpulent cadaver. And I thought, oh, this this doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't even fully understand what goes on. I know he's part of the big clan boss team and he's got a shield mechanic. And then apparently there was something that they found out they could do with him in Hydra, and people have been doing that. I don't care. I haven't tried to build it. I haven't tried to look it up. I'm not interested. So initially I was like, this doesn't apply to me, and I was, I was about to move on. And then I heard him say, but it applies to other things, and it's more about balancing as a whole. So I want to see how balancing champions somehow has the community mad at creators over it and not Clarion. That's what I'm curious about. That's why we're doing this. So, as I mentioned, it starts with Corpulent Cadaver. Let me go ahead and play a quick tidbit of my interview with Cirilla so you guys can get up to date with what they're doing to Corpulent Cadaver and how I responded to her. It's finally happening uh, next week. Uh, fingers crossed, if all is well, uh, there will be another release, uh, version release of the game. And uh, with it, uh, we are going to nerf uh, or rather fix Cadaver. Uh, and uh, namely his uh, A1. Uh, we're gonna put a 200k uh, uh, cap to the additional damage from his shield. Gotcha. So gotcha. this yep. is something that we'll ask you to uh, see how it plays out in the sure. end. Yeah, I mean, I can speak for myself on that one. I am happy that you're doing that. I'm sure people who went out of their way to build that team and upgrade those champions will not be. Uh... <laughs> That's a question. <laughs> that's a question. I guess that's probably the nature of the beast to some extent. Don't be fair. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if, if that's if people are upset with him for that, I don't guess it's a surprise. Hmm. However, from the jump, that mechanic with Corpulent Cadaver has been ridiculous, right? Doing a billion damage to the clan boss was clearly never intended. And while I don't think anyone should be punished or anything for doing it, it certainly was never intended, right? Plarium doesn't test their game. We know this. That's why champs come out broken on a fairly regular basis. That's why things get broken and figured out like that on a fairly regular basis. And Plarium has to react. And to some degree, maybe you can't always be on top of that, right? There, there's going to be stuff you overlook. When you, when you, even if you have testers testing your game as a developer, when you release something out to, you know, 
theoretically millions of players. I don't know how many actual daily active players I have, but when hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands even, when you invite that many people in, there's going to be things that get discovered that you overlook. So it's it's fine, right? What's not fine, maybe, is that they let it go on for so long and made you believe, no, it's fine. This is what we, this is what we wanted. Working as intended, right? They, they love working as intended. Um, this has gone on long enough, I would say, that if you built Corpulent Cadaver and were doing Clan Boss and Hydra with him and now they nerf him and it doesn't work anymore, I think you've more than gotten your resources back, right? From from what you've been able to do in Clan Boss and what you've been able to do in Hydra, you've you've it's more than paid for itself the investment unless you did it two days ago. You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't think, and again, I don't know that this is where this is going. I'm just speculating a little bit. But if you're mad at him because of that comment, I don't, I don't know if I agree. I think I think it's long overdue. I don't think it's fun for there to be shit in the game that's that broken. Unkillable clan boss teams were not intended. Don't ever let Playeria make you believe that it was. They had no idea anybody was going to figure something like that out. Uh, but I think it's fine. It's fine. They, 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 they've adjusted. They've put a 50 turn limit. That's still plenty of time for you to get your one key damage. I think it was a, a fair adjustment to it. Um, this corpulent cadaver thing is sounds insane. I've seen the pictures of, of crazy, 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 unthinkable damage to these bosses. It's silly. So if you're mad at him because he's saying he's glad that's happening, I guess you got to be mad at me too because I'm I'm also glad. okay. So there we go. <laughs> so that reaction by me in this 30 minute video, I wasn't ready for it honestly. That was the the number one co or complained about thing was my reaction to that corpulent cadaver nerf news. Like I'm a fan, but people must be upset who built the team. Did that go the way you thought it was going to go? Nope. And honestly, <laughs> it was kind of a thoughtless comment, you know? Let me just tell you my, my, my thought process it didn't, on that. It didn't seem... It didn't seem like a, like a jab at people who have built the team. I think he was more flowing with the conversation. He's like, it doesn't... It's the same way I was saying, like, it doesn't affect me because I don't build the team. I'm not interested. But I don't think he was like, ha ha, if you built the team, you've got... You've now get... You're now getting what's coming to you. I don't think that's what he meant. I think he was just like, it doesn't affect me. But I bet you're going to have a lot of upset players on your hands that have invested in this team. I think that's more what it was. I think it was more the humor and it was like, <laughs> you're going to get an earful over this. Not for me because it doesn't affect me. But there's a lot of people it does. I don't think he was jabbing. Right. My thought process was, yeah, I'm not against, you know, I say free to play. But let's face it, Brogny and Corpulent. Uh, and then a bunch of buff extenders is more free to play or accessible than like a Acrisia team or something like that, right? But I actually wanted to talk about two other videos first, right? So Hell Hades, he released a video uh, called My Record. Double Acrisia is like cheating. And then I, I couldn't help but notice because I like to I like to review what people are talking about, you know? I couldn't help but notice. Let me just go to the top comments here. Now that Carpenter Cadaver is getting nerfed, I gotta build the next best thing. Hades gotta put Curse in his gear. Okay, okay. Carcan teams like this are the reason that Cadaver teams shouldn't be nerfed to the ground. I agree, he shouldn't be able to hit for more than 3 million per hit, but he is part of the past fusion where this one is like opening your wallet, so why are teams like this not mentioned as OP? Well, it's because too many Krakens would be mad for spending money on champs like this. Should they be rewarded? Yes, but Hydro Clash will become what Live Arena is, a Kraken Fest. This team is more updated unobtainable than the core team with all those there's a whole conversation to be had about live arena as well like live arena should be so much more interesting and much like regular arena it, it will be a crack and fest at the top that's hard to avoid but much like regular arena they have their own thing up there and then the rest of us have it down where the rest of us have it but live arena is designed so poorly that that's not how it works yet. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to start everybody at the bottom and make them climb up through the ranks instead of doing placement matches like every other fucking game in the history of games makes you do placement matches to get put into the bracket you most likely belong in and climb from there. there there's other things too with Live Arena. I, I, again, aggravating, different conversation. 
Boy Legos. So it's okay to have a double Acrisia team to do insane amounts of Hydra damage, but the Core Plant team is bad and should get a nerf. Maybe they should nerf Acrisia for Hydra. So they're going to nerf uh, Cadaver, but not Acrisia, Nutcracker, Krisk, Siffy, Marishka, Taurus. They nerf Rotos and Tormin, but they're not going to nerf Acrisia. This game is dead for players like me who will never pull a meta champ. Four and a half years of playing Raid. Uh, still trying to get uh, Sir Nick, I guess, in Venus. Can't get any Void Legos above C tier. It's stupid how Raid balances the game. Six Voids Legendaries Great. from Shards. Most free to play Hydra team I've ever seen. Would be nice to have one Acrisia. Since Corporate is no longer going uh, to be an option for Hydra, now all I have to do is spend thousands of dollars on Void Shards to stay competitive. I see what they did. We complain about a Cadaver team that ruins Hydra Clash with stupid numbers, but this is the same exact thing. If you're lucky enough to have... That's a good point. That's a good point. Hydra is a huge pain in the ass. And this was a way for people, I guess, to do it fairly reasonably. Unreasonable amounts of damage, but reasonably um, obtainable, I guess. And in, in the sense that it's that it's not unlikely that you'll be able to build it. So, yeah, I, I, I guess in that sense, like. I guess they need to do more to Hydra to make it more approachable and more fun. They made some subtle changes that did have a kind of an impact. Uh, I think they allowed you to provoke the head of decay. I think that was one of the changes. And then I feel like they made one more change and it made it more interesting. There was a period of time where I was having a good time trying to set up Hydra teams and stuff. But again, as I, as I allude to a lot, I have time to do it, right? This is my job. So I have time to sit here and do it throughout the day. Whereas most of the player base does not, do this for a living they have other things going on. they have a job to do all day uh so they can't sit here and, and and give it that much attention and granted that's one of the things that creators content creators bring to the, the to, to the table is we can sit here and figure this shit out all day and then present it to you but some people like to figure it out for themselves some people like to get in there and, and dig around and, and and play the game and in a way where they get to figure stuff out as well. And Hydra just, I just don't feel like has had anyway. It's been a while since I've tried Hydra, but I don't feel like it had that approachability, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Um, it's, it's not fun for most players. It's not interesting. It's far too time consuming to not only do it. If you've got a team, it's, it's time consuming to do it, but then trying to get together a team let alone three teams like what are you, you that's crazy that's crazy so i guess i understand this is a team that a lot of people could build that solves that problem i guess it's not about the damage it's doing it's about the ease of access and the fact that it solved the problem and now the problem is no longer solved for those players it's it's still solved for players like hades that have a crazy amount of money in the game, all the top Void Legos, and the time. I guess that makes sense. To have an Acrisia or two, it's no different than having a Brogni Krisk and doing a Cadaver team. It's because some salty whales don't want a rare to, to being used to be useful. LOL, but the Corporal and Cadaver nerf is going to make Hydra clash so much more balanced. Now I'm actually going to be able to compete. You guys might not end up losing. Uh, you guys might not end up losing in a Hydra clash by 20 billion points anymore. But believe me, you will most definitely be getting your cheeks clapped by teams like this in Hydra <laughs> class. For all the complaints and crying about Cadaver somehow using dupe champs that deal over 200 million damage is somehow okay. LOL, this is the type of shit we'll see when cadaver gets nerfed we're gonna be talking about hydro clash being a problem because it's still gonna be in all honesty as much as i appreciate hh gaming and all they do for the average players videos like this that make me want to leave this game because it reminds me that i'll never have these levels unless i take out a second mortgage thank you hades you may leave in this game much easier you know what guys have i made my point i will end there but there's uh, so many comments like this and yeah th th that's that's a valid approach i wasn't thinking about it beyond the cadaver team Partially because, again, I don't, I'm not plugged in that scene. I don't, I don't even know about the double Acritia thing. I thought there was one team that did it. Kind of like there was one team, maybe with some small modifications, that could do it in Clan Boss. I didn't realize there were 
other ways that this was still broken because again they they never intended for you to be able to do this much damage they did not know this was going to be possible people figured it out and now it's a thing and i guess now they're using it to their benefit so they're locking you out of the version that is closer to free to play depending on if you've been playing long enough to have fused brogni and now this is i guess only going to be possible if you've spent enough money to end up with a with a roster similar to Hell Hades, um, which I a hundred percent agree is is a, I mean, unfortunately, it's it's right on par for Plarium. It's I'm now surprised it even took this long, to be honest. Man. Uh, Frankly, first of all, I love Hades and I love the HH Gaming True uh, crew. Excuse me. This is not meant to be any sort of a shot or anything like that. To be real, I should have seen this coming, and he should have seen this coming. These type of comments, right? Uh, I should have seen it coming when I just like, you know. And it's a bummer, that also for Hell Hades because for him, this may have been very fun and exciting. This might have been fun to put together. It might have been fun to do. It's cool that he got a new damage record. This is all. These are all cool things for him. But also, in the wake of the corpulent cadaver nerf, it's a it's a tough it's probably a tough watch for anybody that was running, especially anybody that was running the corpulent cadaver team, because now you've been kicked out of the club. So I get it. I get it from both directions. Again, like he's saying, no no shot at all to Hades. He should enjoy that. He should get to have fun with that. All of the all of the positive things that he experienced with this whole thing for himself should get to be present. But I think the people that that got kicked out of the club recently because of the cadaver nerf have a right to be upset, not at him, which it didn't seem like anybody was really upset with him. So that's good. Upset at Plarium, definitely. Because there's what's the defense here? The fact that there's I, again, I thought there was one broken team. So they're not fixing the they don't care that the team has broken. They care that the team was broken and too obtainable too inexpensive Leslie agreed that it's a great nerf to Cirilla and I didn't ask a follow-up question about not about to me it's not about nerfing every champion into the ground personally and it's not because I have them I don't have I don't have supreme Gal I don't have half the champions on this team for example right it's about that I'm always a fan of buffing other viable strategies that can help non-spenders compete versus nerfing everybody yeah. into the ground, right? hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's that's something I've been advocating for. That's something I always advocate for in every game. That's why I, I have a free-to-play series in a lot of the games that I play because I want to put the game and the developers to the test. I want to see, did you really try to make a game that everybody can play and enjoy or did you make a game to try to empty people's wallets? Plarium made a game specifically to try to empty your wallets. Specifically. They are fun and player appreciation and all of this, all of these other things that are important are so far down on the list of what's important to Plarium. It's like number one is money, and then there's like a long gap. It's like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven got skipped, and number twelve is like fun and stuff like that. But it's money, right? And I'm I've, I'm not mad at them for trying to make money. I want I want these developers to make money, but I want them to make money for the right reasons. I want them to be rewarded for the right things. Uh, Summoner's War is a game that I bring up a lot. Summoner's War is the reason I bring it up is because it's kind of the OG of the genre, right? Summoner's War was the uh, like pioneer of these these mobile RPG gotcha games. They they kind of set the blueprint that all the all these other games followed. And for a long time, it was basically Every other game was basically knock off Summoner's War with different graphics, right? Same skill descriptions, same dungeon mechanics, same everything, right? They were, they were just picking it up and putting it in their own IP with different graphics. Uh, as time went on, these, these developers started to branch out and start trying different things. And one of the things that I liked so much about Raid when it first came out is that they clearly followed the blueprint. Clearly Summoner's War inspired, but there was enough things different about it that I was like, okay, this doesn't, this is one of the first games that doesn't feel like a straight up ripoff of Summoner's War. This feels like another game in the genre, right? It's, it's, it, you know, Mortal Kombat to Street Fighter. It's like, it's not a ripoff. 
it's it's a side scrolling fighting game to you, but but it's not the same game. They're trying to do their own things. They had masteries. They had uh, more gear slots. They had some different mechanics in the dungeons. They have some different skill mechanics. They had different approaches to different things. Right. Off to a great start. I think it's when Aristocrat got involved that things really went downhill. And I think we all know that now. Um, but I, I, I went off with such a change there. I don't even know <laughs> where, where, I, where I was going. But that's what it was. In comparison to other games, most other games these days, and it's almost like the developers are starting to figure it out by watching Plarium do it the way Plarium is doing it. You you have to prioritize other things than money to to have players feel like they want to give you money. I spend money in just about every other game that I play. I I will not spend money in raid right now. They they have a lot to do before I'll ever be willing to put money in this game again. I am not going to give them money. They, when I, when I started the new free to play series, I was back and forth like. Maybe I'll do a free to play. A lot of people have been wanting me to do like a low spend series where I spend, you know, 50 bucks a month or something like that uh, and see what we can accomplish. And I, I did a poll and, and let y'all vote and y'all voted on the low spend series. And I, I just I, I gave it a little more thought. And I was like, I just don't want to give them money. I'm, I'm so against them making any money with the way that they're acting, with, with the way that they're treating their game and their player base. I'm so against the idea of contributing to their pockets like i don't i don't want them to make money right now i don't want them to make money doing the things that they're doing i don't want them to fail i want them to stop making money for as much money for long enough for them to rearrange their priorities because that's what it's going to take their pockets are going to have to suffer before this before they really start trying to make the game good because everything they do right now even when it seems like it's good to us it's not for us it, Everything they do is a strategy for money, purely tunnel visioned money. Again, not mad at them. They're a business. They've got employees. They've got mouths to feed. They should be trying to make money. But if you look at other games, and I can tell you from personal experience, if I feel like a game, if I feel like a developer really wants me to have fun, if I feel like a developer really appreciates my time and attention to their game, I am more than happy to spend money in the game. Like, I'm more than happy to. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy spending money in these games when I feel like it's warranted. And it's not warranted in Raid. They don't deserve your money. And this is a great example of it. This is a great example of them not appreciating you. As is, as is like most of what they do. It's, it's, they're constantly in your face telling you, how little appreciation they have for you, how little you matter to them, how little it matters that you have fun in their game. They're constantly telling us how unimportant all that is. They're just standing in front of you with their hand out, like, you hand it over. You, if you want to participate, hand it over. And there's so many people still doing it, still giving them the money. Because the, the, they've, 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 they've convinced you you're missing out. They've convinced you if you miss this fusion or anything, if you don't do this path event, if you don't, you're missing out. You're, you're not going to get this champ that can do these things. You're not going to get this skin. Uh, you, you better do this summon event. Now, now the summon portal's always glowing. Well, you're going to have to buy shards if you want to do the double legendary event that's live right now. Because you probably don't have any ancients, because it wasn't that long ago, ago that there was an event going on that you needed to use your ancients. And uh, there's a there's a two x void, but there's also going to be a guaranteed void champ in three more days. So you you better stock up on some void shards because you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on this seer. And I know there was a two x void three days ago, but now it's now it's guaranteed seer for forty. And you need seer. You can't speed run dungeons really without seer. So you probably just go ahead and buy the void shards. It's guaranteed seer. You at least know what you're getting. Oh, now it's now there's a 10x coming for uh, a Critzia, and you need her clearly. Clearly, you need a Critzia if you want to be able to compete at all in Hydra class. You're going to need her, and the Corpulent Cadaver thing's not going to work anymore. So you better just you better just grab these Void packs as they pop up and stock up, right? 
It's just perpetual, ongoing. They're constantly convincing you you're missing out, and they're constantly tweaking the game to put you in a position to feel like you're missing out so that you'll give them money. And there's people that are falling for it, and that's driving me insane. And I've never really pushed for, like, a strike, a spending, like, stop spending money. But it's, I'm getting, I feel myself getting closer and closer to it every day. We got to stop giving these guys money. We got to stop giving Plarium money. That's the only language they speak. That's the only language they speak. The only time they've ever taken feedback from the players is to make themselves look good. I, I would venture to say that every time they've ever taken player feedback and made an adjustment, like I think there was a time they were going to nerf Duchess and then they decided not to do it. And I think there's been another example or two of something like that. I, I, I would bet anything that the plan from the jump was to not do whatever the thing was they were planning on doing so that they could look like they took some feedback. I, th I think they were never going to nerf Duchess. I think that was, let's, relief, let's, let's release patch notes that say we're going to nerf Duchess. It's going to piss everybody off, and then we can not nerf Duchess. It'll make us look good. You know what I mean? I just, I have no faith in them. I have no trust in them. And it drives me crazy that people are giving them money out of, out of a feeling of necessity. If you, if you just casually play the game and you enjoy the game and you ha you're happy to spend money in it, like I talked about how I am with other games, fine. I don't like it. I don't like it. But it's your business. It's your money. You do what you want to do with it. What really bothers me is people that feel like they have to spend to enjoy the game that are not spending at the level that Wills are spending to compete in Platinum. That's a different conversation. That's a different game. Those people are in their own realm of reality as far as the game is concerned. I'm talking about the average player who is going to sit in gold four or gold five, maybe one key or two key clan boss, has most of their dungeon team sorted, who just feel, who have just been convinced that they have to continue to invest in, invest in these things that Plarium has designed specifically to make you feel that way. It's 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 really starting to bother me a lot that that it's that it's been so successful for Plarium to put so many people in that position with this game, with this mobile game that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? I'm frustrated for the sake of of that part of the player base. If I if I reel it in and I just think about me, I'm fine. I ha I'm enjoying the game. Plarium can't genuinely piss me off anymore because I don't care that much. I'm casually playing the game. I've got my free-to-play account. We we have our coffee every morning and we play a little bit and I do a little bit of grinding throughout the day. I go for a fusion here and there. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? I don't really care. I care on principle and I care for the sake of the people who who have been put in this place where it's like, Fuck, now I gotta buy these void shards because I've gotta get this seer. I need seer so I can speed run these dungeons. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't need her. And I hate that they've convinced you that you do. Again, as far as I'm concerned, I'm cool, man. I don't, I don't, I don't care anymore. I've left the content creator program, so I don't even have to read the conversations. I don't, I don't, I don't owe them anything. I don't have to listen to them. I don't know. They, they, you know what I mean? They, I don't have to read the conversations in the content creator chat anymore. I can just play the game casually the way I want to play it, continue to not give them any money, and, and enjoy what we do, right? The, the, the daily morning video. Again, I'm having fun playing the game. There, there's fun to be had in the game. I just feel like so many people have been pushed out of that zone of having fun. And it's become stressy. Trying to keep up with this fusion and trying to manage my shards. And I'm okay, I'm gonna skip this summon event because I want to do the next summon event. It's like, why is all that necessary? Why does there have to be a summon event every fucking day? Like, why why does every fusion have to be such a fucking grind? Why does every event in the game have to be such a grind? 
Why why are the Halloween events grindier than other events we've seen in the past? I'm pretty sure that you have to get more points in the Dungeon Divers to get the points for the Halloween event than you do during a fusion. Not 100% that's true, but I think that's the case. And then, then the path, the Masquerade path, they put a Kale skin at the bottom? You're going to grind your fucking ass off and spend, spend money for points and shit for a Kale skin? What are you talking about? <laughs> they just arbitrarily throw shit in these events. There's no thought behind it. It's not meant to be fun. It's meant to make you feel like you're missing out. And that's aggravating. So this turned into a completely different thing than I thought it was. I'm going to stop the reaction here because I've gone off on such a tangent. <laughs> so if you want to see the rest of Ash's video, again, it'll be linked below and I'll card to it on the screen. Yeah, this, this just turned into a, a, a rant about probably something totally different. But I'm going to go ahead and upload it because I reckon I, I want it all said in one place. Um, I'll probably go and watch the rest of this video because I am interested in where he was going with it. Um, and I don't know. No, I don't think I'll do a part two or anything. Maybe Ash and I will get together and discuss this and things like this sometime soon in a video or something. Um, but yeah, if you want to see the rest of his video, it's linked, it's carded, it'll be on the screen. Uh, and I don't even know what to say because I, I feel like I took so many turns through this whole conversation, I don't even know what to ask you your thoughts on. So uh, I guess I just will say I hope you enjoyed listening to me rant. <laughs> uh, I hope in some way maybe it, it, it echoed something you're feeling or made you feel seen. Maybe you're one of the players I'm talking about that Playroom has, has bullied into this position that you feel like you're missing out if you're not spending money and hoarding and stressing over the structure of the events and shit like it, it doesn't have to be that way it doesn't i'm telling you i'm playing this game free to play as casually as i can play it and i'm having a really good time i think i think i think the more you disconnect from this game the more enjoyable it is in my case i can't speak for every, everybody i know some people like that meticulous data driven hoarding type grunt you know chosen's very analytical and he likes to hoard resources and, and he plays the game a very different way than i play it and he enjoys it and that that's fine you know what i mean so i'm not telling you you're wrong however you're playing it however you're enjoying it but if you find that you're not enjoying it if you find that you're stressed out more than you're enjoying it if these if if the the impending summon event every day has you concerned about ever using your shards or you feel like you can't use your shards because there's going to be a fusion or, or whatever it is. That stuff doesn't have to exist. You can, you can have fun in this game. You might just have to pull back a little bit. So again, enjoy the game how you want to enjoy it. Spend the money you want to spend. It's your own business. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do or tell anybody that the way that they're playing or enjoying the game is wrong. I'm just telling you what's working for me. And maybe trying to nudge you a little bit if you are one of the players that is feeling like you're missing out or any of the other stuff that we've talked about. It doesn't have to be that way. All right. So that's it. I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed this ridiculous long. <laughs> uh, sh shout out to Ash for, I guess, sparking this conversation in me. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>